think kissing gets underrated by a lot of people when it comes to intimacy. I think we forget, like, I think if someone gives you, like, good head or if you're having, like, a really good session with someone, they're going to be like, wow, you're amazing at this. But we go, we just sleep on kissing all the time, but it's so core and so essential. Welcome to Honey Do Me, a podcast that goes into the bedroom and beyond. Hosted by Emma Norman and Cass Anderson. Here at Honey Do Me, we don't have all the answers. So we chat with experts, educators, and badass change makers to get them. We are here to remind our listeners and ourselves that what we're going through is normal. That we are worthy of love and pleasure. And that we are all in this together. So tell us, honey, how do you do you? Hi. Hi. How's it going? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Honey Doobie Podcast. <laughs> Ugh. That was a horrid sound. That's I hope what you kissing don't kiss sounds people that like. Way. That's what kissing sounds well, like. Well, good thing we had this great interview because you need some serious help. Today, know, we might. are talking about kissing with Cody. How yeah, cute not is that? kissing Cody, but kissing yeah, with. He's going to teach us how to kiss. Expert Cody. Exactly. Yeah. I have always been someone very interested in kissing. Even I can remember even in like middle school, I was like, I just want to make sure that I'm making out right and that I'm a perfect kisser. And like, I was very romantic at a young age. Yeah. <laughs> I love that energy. I know. It's so. better than like, I just want to give great blowjobs. That's my only goal, <laughs> yeah. which if that's your goal, that's your goal. That's your yeah. goal. We'll have an episode coming out for you soon. But, but kissing tips, I think are, I think they're really fun. Yeah. They're foundational. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you can do great tongue great sex. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. You'll see where I'm going with this. Got it. Like, that's great. But if you're a shitty kisser, mm -hmm. it's you know, hard to get in the mood. That's going to take everything away. Right. Yeah. So if you've ever felt like, I'm okay at kissing, this is for you. <laughs> yeah. Or even if you're like, I'm an expert, I bet there's something in this right. episode for you because there's a lot of shit that neither of us had heard. Exactly. So. I mean, that's why a lot of Cody's content has blown up because people want to know about kissing. They want to exactly. know tips. They want to know what makes a great kisser, what makes a bad kisser, how what to, to avoid, kissing. how to practice kissing because COVID, you know, how do you practice kissing? What if that's I'm scared. What if I'm, I'm scared. What if I'm bad once I get out of COVID? Mm -hmm. So I think these were all phenomenal tips to just freshen up your kissing game. Exactly. We could all use a little help. We can all use a little assistance, whether you're a I'll novice use a little or an Cody. expert. I'll use a little bit of Cody. <laughs> I'm excited for you guys to listen, and yeah. we'll see you on the other side. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Hello, my name is Cody with a K. I'm at O Cody on TikTok, Instagram, and all other socials. I started making TikToks as a class project in undergrad, actually. So I went to Kent State University. I studied public relations. I had minors in economics and marketing. And when I was there, I realized that I loved making content. And so when TikTok kind of started to take off in 2019, I was like, why don't I jump on this? Yeah. We should study it. I need to understand how it works. Like if I'm going to have a job, I should know how this platform <laughs> is working. So I made a dance with a friend and it ended up going viral. I got some followers that kind of thing. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Well, then COVID hit and I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing with my social media platform anymore. I want to rebrand. I want to figure out what I'm doing. So I am a gay male and I have always struggled with finding information about like sex education mm -hmm. and how like my body works and how relationships work and dating. And I never had that cool older friend that I could talk to. So I was like, hmm, I have this following. It's mainly young people who are trying to understand their, themselves, their bodies, that kind of thing. What if I start making content that I wish I would have had when I was younger? Mm -hmm. I was a little nervous and scared because it's taboo. So mm -hmm. I waited until I was moved to New York City, going to grad school, and I decided, okay, I'm going to make this content switch. So I started with... a. Uh, TikTok that was about something that happened to my body that I had not expected. Guys can get wet. Did not know that. Found out live in action in person. And it blew up. And all of a sudden, I had all of these people being like, I'm so glad you're here. Please talk about it. Please tell us more. 
And that's really where I got to with it. And so right now I'm just talking about all things to do with like the body, relationships, romance, dating, tips, how to have fun and all that jazz. So that's how I got where I am. What a great way to use your platform. I feel like we totally relate to like, we just need to talk about things that people are asking for people that don't have, we just don't have access to it. It's like, let's just make this approachable. So I love that you just made a switch and went for it and people are totally responding. Totally. And the yeah, willingness yeah, to be like vulnerable and share your own story as a way of educating, I feel like just adds that extra layer of like, oh, I can trust this person. Like yeah. they also get it. <laughs> yeah. Is that where everything comes from is just like personal experience and your own knowledge? Yeah, definitely. So I, <laughs> I have been around the block. And I like to say, well, ask, How do you know so much? I'm like, well, you know, it's not my first rodeo. Um, so I think a lot of that is my personal experience and lived experience, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, I get a lot of comments from people on TikTok being like, you're brave for posting this. And I'm like, it's embarrassing. Yes, because like, I'm kind of an adult now. But when I was like, younger i would have loved to have an influencer who was showing me these things are talking about it and making it normal and i think that's one of the biggest issues we have right now is that we've made sex and pleasure and love and dating so taboo and it's not everyone does it like we are sexual creatures at nature i say it all the time like our biological function is to reproduce mm -hmm. and we should be talking about it and we should be better educating. And our public school systems suck. I went to public school mm -hmm. and I don't know about you all, but my sex education classes were worthless. Yeah, They're normally taught by like 50 year old men who made it a joke <laughs> and made it super uncomfortable. Totally. And I was completely lost and they never talked about LGBTQ stuff, let alone anything about like pleasure. I walked out of there being like, I don't know anything except for like, to be afraid of my body. I'm going to die if I have sex. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> we just got pictures of like herpes um, use condoms yeah. if you have sex <laughs> and it was the basketball coach that did our sex ed and uh, everyone yeah. it was just like so awkward and cringy it was hilarious yeah that just gave me flashbacks to when they made us touch the rubber testicles to try uh, to find like a lump on it so you could oh for like self-expection of the testicles and that that's like the only like maybe useful thing we did, yeah i'm like that's really actually weird. a pretty good teaching tool. i know <laughs> but that's yeah. so funny to like suck at everything and be like but Let's talk about giving yourself an exam. <laughs> Let's touch these testicles yeah. together. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Pass them around. Well, I freaking love it. I think we should just go for it. Let's just yeah. dive into kissing because that is why we're here. So let's just start with the basics of kissing. Like, how do you know if you're a good kisser? So here's the thing. We all have the power to be good at kissing, right? It's all about practice and being transparent with your partners and wanting to learn, right? So if you're a beginner kisser and you're like, am I good at this? Am I going to be good at it? It's not something you're just naturally born with. Like it takes time. It takes practice. You don't just wake up and just get good at kissing. You have to be willing to learn and go on the journey of being a good kisser. If when it comes to being really good at kissing, I think a telltale sign is that if you're really good at it is that your partner doesn't want to stop kissing. Mm -hmm. Like it's hard yeah. to transition away from it. And that's always a good thing because like kissing is so intimate at its core and it can be done so well and be so pleasurable for both people when done right. Mm -hmm. That gives me flashbacks of that scene from John Tucker Must Die. Do you remember that movie? I remember the movie. What are you? Yeah. They're talking about like, how do I know if I'm a good kisser? And she's like, has anyone told you you're a good kisser? And she's like, no. Oh. And then she's like, then I'm a bad kisser. Oh, that's really sad. So I've always, that's been my only uh, measure for good kissing. I'm just supposed to be, I'm waiting to get told. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I feel like, I wish more people would give compliments about that too. I think kissing gets underrated by a lot of people when it comes to intimacy mm -hmm. I think we forget like I think if someone gives you like good head or if you're having like a really good session with someone they're gonna be like wow you're amazing at this mm -hmm. but we go we just sleep on kissing all the time but it's so core and so essential I love kissing so much and I love making out it like is the first thing that will really turn me on but I've been with people that like don't like it as much and I I hate that and I don't get what the problem is like why don't you want to just like lock lips for like 10 minutes like why <laughs> maybe you're a bad kisser just kidding wow <laughs> that was hard. based on john tucker must die yeah. i'm just going by my one rule <laughs> i'm not i know i'm really good <laughs> so how do you know if you're a for me. bad yeah. kisser then 
Yeah. People pull away. Yeah. <laughs> like if people aren't wanting to kiss you. <laughs> no, I think that I'm trying to think. So I, I don't know. I'm a good kisser, right? So I, I can't speak an experience of what it's like to be a bad kisser. But I would assume when I think about the guys that I've kissed who were bad at it, it's definitely someone like pulls away or tries to rush away from it. Like I remember this one guy that I tried talking to and he had bad breath. And mm-hmm. like, it wasn't like a one-time thing or like a woke up in the morning and it was a little like, okay, like it's morning breath, whatever. It was like, he just had bad breath all the time. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't want to kiss him. Like mm-hmm. I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't want to be part of that. And so <laughs> I just remember he like tried to kiss me and like, I quickly was like moving down his neck. I'm like, I need to get away from here. I need to get away. I need to move <laughs> out. I need to pack my bags. Like, I need to pack my bags. I gotta go. So. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I was with one of the worst kissers, I think, to walk the earth. He like, (laughs) we were making out and I literally like stopped in the middle to like get drool that was dripping. I knew you're going to hate hate that part. I I was like, this isn't me. I know it's him. And this sucks so bad. Like it literally felt like his lips had like folded down and just like taken over my mouth. (laughs) And I, I constantly like, it was one of our first couple dates and he was like trying to kiss and he turned on like Caddyshacks, like not even like, like a weird movie. And I was like, nope, I'm really interested in this movie. I'm just going to keep watching. Thank you. This is one of my favorites. I know. I don't think we didn't really go out after that. I was like, I can't, I'm not even going to like try to get used to this. This is awful. I'm swimming in your mouth. It's disgusting. Yeah, no, definitely. That that reminds me of people who get really quickly aggressive when kissing. And I think that's one way to be really bad at it is mm-hmm. like, you have to start slow. And some of my videos that have done well on TikTok are just talking about that simple trick to kissing. You want to start with like a nice light peck. You don't want to shove your tongue directly down their throat. It's not something you just go, okay, we're going to sit down now and my tongue is going into the back of your throat. No. Let's start with like a peck and then like a little bit more of like when that lip on lip action and then slowly the tongue's going to sneak in. Mm -hmm. The moment someone tries to shove their tongue down my throat, I am like, okay, like this is kind of a lot. And now I'm like a little turned off by this. Yeah. Well, I think that leads perfectly to where we wanted to go too, which was like using your tongue during kissing. And it's like, what is a good plan of attack <laughs> or yeah. How do you, how do you start sliding it in? Cause I've heard you're supposed to do the ABCs when you use your tongue, but that feels chaotic and like a lot <laughs> to do in someone else's mouth. And so what are some good tips to like start using tongue when you're kissing? So I think that here's my method. I'm just going to start from the beginning, right? Okay. So you start with that pack. You do a couple packs. Like that's where you just lips on lip, nothing too intense. You know, you got your hands on each other, like either on the chest or the shoulder or in their hair, whatever you like, wherever your hands feel natural. And then as you're pecking, the pecks become a little harder. You start to open your mouth some so that your lips are going at each other. And so that's like that. It's kind of like biting with your lip. As I explain to people, it's so hard when you can't show them. And even on like, platforms where you can't actually make out with someone (laughs) it's hard to explain but like your lips just continue to kind of like bite each other and so your lips are doing this whole like motion and like dance and then because your lips are already opening to do that to get those harder kisses in your mouth is low-key starting to open and that is your like ticket into using your tongue (laughs) Uh the moment you can start to feel that little bit of that lip movement and there's like okay there's an opening that's when you can start to slide your tongue out so for me my best advice is this The moment that you're going harder with the kissing and the mouth starts to open, just lightly use the tip of your tongue to lick the bottom of the lip. So like I go for the bottom lip first and that's kind of like that signal to my partner. Like, okay, like we're going to start putting, putting the tongue. We're getting to it. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. And so a nice little like lick onto the lip while you're kissing. And then I like to do just like, I don't do ABC method or any of that stuff. I like to do (laughs) spell their name. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) That's a tip I use for like riding. No, we're not spelling names here. I like focusing on swirling. I think that gives you the most action. So Uh like once you get that first initial lick, you can do like a little swirl on the lips and go in. So then you want to get inside of their lips and the inner lip area. And your partner at that point should recognize, okay, we're both going to use tongue now. And so hopefully their tongue is now getting involved. Mm -hmm. So you're not just like licking their lips. And now (laughs) you can start 
flicking your tongues against each other. Cause that's, what's really pleasurable about tonguing when you're having like a moment and you're making out is when you start to have this motion of your tongues touching and there's something really like, I don't know, sensual about that. I don't know even how to describe it, but when you get into that tongue action, it's like almost wrestling. Like, have you ever, you know, thumb wrestled somebody? Yeah, yeah. Do totally. that with your tongue. Like, that's <laughs> kind of what we're doing. Here. Take it's them like, down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So funny. Is there any way to like train while you're kissing? So like say that they're giving you really bad tongue action while you're kissing them. I've always been like trying to show them mirroring. This is how we should be doing it. But then sometimes they just keep you know, doing the tongue poking thing. So can you like train while you're kissing, like sh follow me or should you stop and like tell them like, let's chill. I really believe in <laughs> stopping and coaching okay. because intimate time is so personal. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That if you don't stop and like lightly let them know like, Hey, like this isn't exactly how I like it. Or can you try doing this? They're never going to want no. And two, if you just, I don't know. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings when you're, when you're doing it right. Mm -hmm. So like example in the past with partners, if they were doing something bad or wrong, I would like to just stop and be like, Hey, like, can we try doing this? Or if it wasn't that bad, I might let it go to the end. And then after we're done, I like to do like a little recap, like, Hey, that was a lot of tongue. Um, maybe we don't do that next time. Can mm -hmm. I show you how to do it? And then kind of, like you said, like, follow me, let me show you how to use your tongue, how I like it. Because mm -hmm. everyone's a little different, too, and you have to be willing to be adaptable when you have different partners. The way that you make out with A is not how you're going to make out with person B. It's just learning how that person likes it, too. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think it's just really realistic because mm -hmm. you can try and train somebody while you're doing it. But I feel like <laughs> that's setting you both up for failure. Yeah. You're putting in more work than you should have to. That's not what you want to be thinking in mm -hmm. that moment. So just really taking a few moments and being like, hey, not all of this is sexy. Like not every single part of it is going to be super fucking yeah, hot. Or flawless. Some of it is going to have to be like, actually, that doesn't feel super good for mm -hmm. me. And I think that's such like a... We should be normalizing that. And I think we should be doing that in all parts of life and sex. Yeah. Well, that's like a huge tool to have is communication, or especially around like sex and whatever you're doing. So if you can start with something a little less like to the heart, you know, where mm -hmm. it's like you could get really insulted if you're like, you're really bad at sex. But if this <laughs> is like, let's practice kissing a little bit better. So that's a good way to start trying to communicate and work mm -hmm. on your talking skills with a partner. Yeah. I think that's great. In a very mature way to do it. <laughs> yeah, I think just, it's so important. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And I think it's really important because you don't know where someone is on their own sexual journey. Like mm -hmm. for me, I've been to the rodeo. I have <laughs> rode the bull many times. <laughs> but when you meet someone and you're trying to be intimate with them, they you might be like maybe their second or third time at it. Or the way that they are doing something was how a past partner liked it. So they think mm -hmm. it's how you're going to like it too. But that's where you both have to understand you're learning about each other. Mm -hmm. And even if you are 100% compatible, there's still going to be that learning curve. Like, I like being touched in different ways than you may know, and I want to share that with you. So I think it's coming from that space, not like, you suck at kissing, yeah. <laughs> but let me show you how I like to be kissed. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. On that note, so for people who haven't kissed a lot of people, what's a way to practice by yourself yeah <laughs> oh my god I used to make out with the like the post of my bed I just remembered that when you said that I used because it was like a corner <laughs> ew I hate me oh I just remembered that how gross of me but you what's said a, you're a really good kisser now so it worked what's a better way to practice kissing by yourself <laughs> I actually just had a video go viral on TikTok Monday about this so three days oh ago. Um, I used my hand and I think it's great because it's actual skin. So what you do mm -hmm. is you make a fist with your hand, right? And so when you do, if you look at your index finger and your thumb, it kind of looks like a mouth. You mm -hmm. have your upper and lower lip. And so then you can practice kissing on it. And if you do it, it feels just like you're kissing somebody because there is that like mm -hmm. where this would be like your mouth. And yeah. so you could even practice tonguing if you really wanted to with your hand. And <laughs> it's funny because all the comments on TikTok now are, are like, not all of us kissing our hands right now. Like, not me <laughs> saving this to use later when mom goes to bed. I'm like, yeah. stop. But it's true. And it helps. And it does It does simulate like you almost are kissing. And you can even move your hand if you want to make it feel like it's kissing you back, if you want to feel like what it might be like to get kissed. 
That's, so. that's a great, it's better than a bedpost, and I love that. And yes. we're all washing our hands like crazy yeah. right now, so it's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Normalize practicing this shit. Like, again, you're not going to get better at something or feel more confident if you're not practicing. So do it like in your room or in the bathroom, whatever, and just practice kissing because I would have loved that trick when I was eight and <laughs> kissing a bedpost. Your post. bed was getting a lot of action, though. <laughs> yeah, it sure was. Oh, my gosh. But no, I love that. I think that's a great tool. <laughs> well, if we back it up a little bit, what are your tips for initiating kisses? Mm-hmm. Like, are there smooth, cool ways, or do you just, like, dive right in <laughs> with that peck? Yeah. That was harder than I meant it. <laughs> <laughs> I- <laughs> I think that that is such a great question. So when it comes to initiating, it plays a lot into your power dynamics. So I think we need to go deeper than just kissing. Like it depends on who, what you want in a relationship and who you are as a person, in my opinion. So like we have submissive people and more dominant people and some people who like to do both, which are our switches, right? I'm a more submissive person. I don't want to make the decisions. I don't want to initiate it. So I'm always the one who's like sitting there like waiting. So like (laughs) make the move on me kind of deal. Mm -hmm. But if you're (laughs) someone who's more dominant, then you're the one who's going to be making that move. So first thing you need to do is realize what is your power dynamic? Like how do you feel in the relationship? What are you looking for with your partner? And that's, there's no, like the stereotypical with that is not always true. So don't assume that, well, I'm, the bottom so i'm gonna be the one who's gonna have to just sit and wait like no there are some bottoms who are power bottoms meaning like they're gonna initiate it all Mm -hmm. just like there are some girls who are powerful and they want to be the dominant one so they're the ones initiating so let's normalize it not being a normal thing you have to figure that out as you get to know your partner Mm -hmm. so that's the first thing you need to figure out who you are do you like being submissive dominant are you down to switch once you know that then here's some tips on how to initiate it if you are a more dominant person I think the best thing that you can do if you're talking to someone who is submissive or looking to be more submissive is to be dominant, which means take control of it. I think there's nothing hotter than when a guy who wants to kiss me, like will sit down right next to me, kind of put his hand on my thigh and then like other hand goes behind the head and just pulls me close for a kiss. Like that is just simply sexy. Like it's just so simple and easy, but that confidence So my biggest tip is if you're going to be dominant or you're going to be the initiator, just be confident no matter which way you're going to do it. The more confident you can start that kiss, the hotter it's going to be for both parties. Of course, with both people wanting that. that Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100% confidence and just like read in the room. I love it. Mm -hmm. And then if you're so I'm an awkward hand (laughs) holder. Um, (laughs) What do you do with your hands when you like really start kissing like? Keeping them down by your sides probably isn't the option. Pockets. <laughs> yeah. Back of the yeah. pocket behind your head. Yeah. <laughs> Good things yeah, to no, do with your hands. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, absolutely do not put them in your pocket. You'd be so You're upset. Gonna... Put them in their pockets, yeah. right? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to use your hands to start rubbing in an appropriate manner, of course. Mm-hmm. You'll want to either do like on the back of the head and through the hair or the shoulders. My favorite being more submissive is like they have their hand behind my head. My one hand is normally on their chest and the other one's like kind of on their shoulder holding because they're supporting my head as they're kissing me. And I'm like kind of holding onto them because I'm being pulled towards them. So definitely utilizing your hands to be kind of sensual. So like I like to like do like put it on his chest and like kind of start to rub on his chest. And even, like, if it's my, like, actual partner that I know well, (laughs) I'll get over towards, like, his nipple and, like, start rubbing towards, like, his nipple and his chest, something that I know is going to turn him on more. Because normally when we start to kiss in a private setting, we're getting ready to, you know, do the do. So (laughs) I try to get that that motion going. That's, like, he normally will put his hand on my thigh and get into my inner thigh and start to rub and squeeze more, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. What's an appropriate hand placement for like a first kiss like if you're the submissive one but you want to show them that like you're enjoying this like where would be a good spot to just like just your hands away from me (laughs) sorry (laughs) i'm practicing (laughs) (laughs) yeah if you're beginning i think that the best thing that you can do is just always play it safe and keep it in the shoulder chest region upper chest and shoulder so if you're submissive for me say we're in public we just went on a coffee date, and this is, of course, post-COVID world or mm-hmm. pre-COVID world. Someday. You go on this coffee date, you walk out, you're on the street, they want to kiss you. It's the first time kissing, like it's the first date. They go to pull you in. My hands will normally go on, like, one on the shoulder, one on the chest, and not essential rubbing, just more like I'm holding here, 
or sometimes around the neck is always great. So like hands over shoulders around the neck, depending on the height difference. Cause that makes, that makes mm-hmm. a difference as well. You have to gauge like, are they taller than me? Are they shorter than me? And where do my hands make sense in this? And so if you're more of the dominant person in that sense, I think the safest places to go with your hands is like back of the head for support. Because if you're going to kiss someone, you're going to be kind of forcing your face into theirs, <laughs> which you want to support their head and neck for that. The head and support is so on, necessary. Like, the hip or side. Mm-hmm. I think that it's always appropriate, like a hip side. Don't grab their butt. You don't know them like that for a first <laughs> kiss. But a hip or side is normally fair play for a first kiss. Mm-hmm. I had an amazing first kiss once where like their hand just started at like the very bottom of my back. And I was like, that that is sensual. <laughs> it was just like, it's gentle, but it's still like sexy enough that it's not like my ass, but it's you know, lower back where that's like not everyone touches your lower back. So that's fun. (laughs) So when you're wanting to heat it up and do like neck kisses, jaw kisses, like how do you body kisses? Body (laughs) kisses. Yeah. What are some tips for like exploring the rest of the face or body? Yeah. um, I think that this is a really great time to start utilizing the tongue. Mm -hmm. Um, So when you go to kiss someone's jaw or neck, something that a lot of people will forget is that you need to use your tongue. So like, let's talk hickeys real quick. I was going to ask. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Let's, <laughs> let's talk some hickeys real quick. So if you're going to kiss on someone's neck, how I like to start is this. You move from the mouth by like kissing, like first start on like their cheek and then get to their jaw and then come down to the neck. So once you're on the neck area, you want to be lower. So like probably like three to four inches down from like their jawline. You don't want to be up, up. You want to get a little down towards like their torso area. And so you want to stay in that region. It's about three to four inches away from the jawline, and it's all pretty much fair game around the whole neck at that point. And first, you want to start with the light pecks again. So like pecking and kissing. And as you're getting a little rougher or more intense with it, you want to start to almost lick and tongue their neck while you're kissing. And so as you're doing these pecks, your tongue is coming out, and it's kind of just pressing against their skin. This is now when you move into hickey zone. So hickeys are really caused from a little bit of biting and a little bit of sucking as you're kissing, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're on their neck, you'll start to like almost nibble onto the skin. If you feel your neck skin, you can grab it. It's loose. It's a little, it's a little flexible. It can be fit. It can be pulled away from their body. So when you kiss, you want to use your teeth and your lips to pull away. That's going to hurt a little. That's hickeys or bruises. Like Mm -hmm. that's, that's what they are. To combat the pain of it, you want to like kind of low-key do a little nibble bite, and then you want to use your tongue to massage it back out. So you want to keep doing that in the same space, and that is how you form a hickey in a way that's sensual and doesn't just hurt. Because I've had guys who've given me hickeys where I'm just like, ow, you just like bit me like a vampire. <laughs> I was going to say you were Edward Cullen. Cunning. <laughs> Edward Cullen ning my neck. <laughs> and I don't need that. There Literally. we go. <laughs> yeah. No, no one, I don't want that. But when you bite, you want to make sure you're combating that with tongue. And that massaging makes it feel really good. And like, I get a lot of questions on TikTok about this. Like, what do I do while someone's kissing my neck? Enjoy it. Yeah. (laughs) Put your head back. (laughs) Moan a little. Like, Mm -hmm. tell them that it feels so good. Um, You don't just want to lay there while someone's just biting your neck. being like staring straight ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Really freaking. Staring at the ceiling thinking about how did I get here? (laughs) (laughs) That would not be the way to go. I guess it depends on the situation. (laughs) How did I get here? (laughs) So on that note of noise, like how much noise should you be making when you're kissing? Should it be silent? Should you be moaning into it? Yeah, I never knew if it was like sensual Mm. enough to be making noises (laughs) or if that's something that like could be kind of sexy. I think it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. Some people are more verbal than others. So that plays into like, if you like being verbal or not. And I also think it's depends on your situation. Um, I live in New York city and I have a flex apartment, meaning my wall is not real and there's a (laughs) hole in it. So like (laughs) my, my roommate and I are good friends. We Mm -hmm. grew up together. We know each other, but like still want to be respectful that we share a common space. Right. Mm -hmm. And anything that happens in my room, you can hear same thing with like if you're in college and you're in a dorm and your roommate is like three feet away from your your bed. Like you don't want to be too crazy loud, quiet. Or even if your house, like my house growing up, really thin walls, there was no hiding anything. Mm-mm. So you want to be conscious of that. But if you have the option, it's really up to you and what you like. For me, I love noise. I think the more verbal that intimate time can be in any settings, place or form, the better. So for me, I love 
moaning, whimpering, saying, you know, sexy phrases like that feels so good or um, I'm trying to think of other good ones for kissing. Mm-hmm. Like that feels so good or kiss me right there or like don't stop that kind of stuff. I think it's hot during kissing, especially as you start to move away from the mouth and get to the body kissing. Mm-hmm. Like one of my favorite things is like if someone's kissing my inner thigh, like I'll like run my hand through the hair and be like, that's it like right there kind of stuff it's hot it's sexy and it like gets them even more like riled up like i'm doing really good everyone likes that little pat on the back mm-hmm. yeah i mean gold star gold star <laughs> you're not wrong um going back really quick do you have tips for getting hickeys to go away um quickly <laughs> in high school it was disgusting and i'm not even proud cuz i don't I don't know. Anyway, I had like a trail because <laughs> it was just a bad hickey experience. And he just like did it just in a trail. <laughs> it looked like Red eyelids crumbs. going down my neck. It was just not. But then it's like, how the fuck do I get this to go away? So my parents don't see. I was wearing scarves in like June. <laughs> yeah, I think that this is so interesting. <laughs> I have a fun story like that from high school, too. Um I had a gay teacher and I was openly gay. And so was my boyfriend. We were the only two openly gay people in the high school at the time. And the one day I had a hickey and he totally called me out in front of everyone for it because I had no idea how to get rid of it either. So Mm -hmm. I think it's important to know how to like either get rid of it or cover it up. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So my mom actually taught me one of her tricks. Um, It hasn't worked for some of my friends, but for my skin, it does. I don't know how that works out. But basically, Mm -hmm. she was she saw that I had a hickey in high school. She looked at me and gave me that like, I'm disappointed, but like, you're also a human, whatever look. Uh And she got a spoon, just a metal spoon. Uh And she put it in the freezer. And then after like 15 minutes, she's like, go get that spoon. And I said, okay. And she's like, now take the back end that's kind of curved and rub it on that. And just press a little hard, but keep rubbing. So, like, basically, when you have a hickey, what a bruise is, is that your blood vessels, like, kind of, like, you know, Mm -hmm. pull up and it's red. And, like, that's where you get that bruise color. Mm -hmm. By cooling it and rubbing it out, it can disperse it and make it less noticeable. Mm -hmm. The thing is that hickeys are going to take time. And then depending on your skin tone, it's going to either yellow or however it does. For me, like when I bruises go away, they get a little yellow. Mm-hmm. I still recommend either trying to put a little bit of makeup over it or, you know, I love rocking a hoodie during those <laughs> times, you know, because then I can just like make sure the hood yeah. like, kind of scruffed up <laughs> so that it doesn't look as noticeable, right? Right. But it's, it's interesting. I also saw recently, I haven't tried it yet. Um, I'll have to tr- get my boyfriend to give me a hickey so I can do it. <laughs> Some girl used a whisk on TikTok. I saw and she that. she was just rubbing a whisk. Oh, my gosh. Went, yes, and it went away. And I was like, I need a hickey right now. <laughs> she said it hurt really bad, though. Oh, God. At least the one I saw, she was like, this hurts. That's like, so, Ooh. that's interesting. Well, I mean, try anything, right? I've heard that spoon one before, but I've never yeah. tried it. So it's nice that at least it works for one person. So I think I've heard toothpaste. Thanks, too. Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Shout out to Mama. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard toothpaste, too. Yeah. Again, another thing I never tried. I just, I would either curl my hair the next day and be like, it was my curling iron. I didn't do it. <laughs> you or, just burn another part. <laughs> you're like, look. <laughs> it would be so random, too. But I'm like, no, it was my curling iron. I swear. And my, everyone was like, okay, obviously it's not. But we know. Emma. Yeah. <laughs> I had another question about teeth like incorporating your teeth a bit, biting a little bit. But then we also were talking about like your teeth hitting each other. So like, how do you avoid that kind of stuff, but also incorporate your teeth? So when it comes to like kissing with mouth, I don't, use teeth at all or like <laughs> it's it's not you should not be in my opinion teething during mouth kissing right your teeth are really more for the body kisses hickeys that kind of thing like nibbling on the body is hot like biting like your nipple or biting like inner thigh like biting someone's butt that's hot that feels good that kind of thing mm-hmm. as far as when it comes to mouth kissing the best way to avoid your teeth hitting each other is just to be conscious to not both kind of go in at each other at once. So like when you're making out, there's like this like chaotic mess of mouth on mouth and tongue on tongue. And like, it's all just hitting. And so like, you kind of get this like cadence and rhythm to it where it just feels natural. And it kind of is a natural like motion and movement. Sometimes if you both kind of go out of cadence, your teeth are going to clash. One thing I would first say is like, let's just normalize that little things happen like that during intimate time. Like, 
your body's going to do weird things like weird noises are going to happen that you're not used to or like your body's going to crack or you might pull a muscle or get a muscle spasm that stuff happens <laughs> mm-hmm. oh my god just like your teeth cramps. are going to clap yeah. sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah i i think just trying to stay in the rhythm feeling like the movement of your partner it's kind of like doing a dance with your mouth that's mm-hmm. the best way to avoid it but at the end of the day when it does happen not a big deal you can either giggle it off or just pretend like it didn't and just keep going yeah that would happen to me all the time in like high school <laughs> when I was just figuring out how to make out. Our teeth would hit so much. And it was like, we can't not laugh at this. Like, otherwise, it's just so awkward. So we need to pause and laugh at the fact that we're eating each other's faces right now because <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> well, one of the last kind of questions that I had is if you had any like, this is a good ass trick to use while kissing. Like, this is my go to. Do you have any moves that you have that like always are a home run (laughs) so as far as like mouth to mouth kissing i think that the biggest trick that i have is i don't think guys expect when they put their tongue into my mouth for me to like actually participate back and so Mm -hmm. what i do is like when they put their tongue back into my mouth i will like almost flick at their tongue using my lips to kind of keep their tongue in my mouth and like kind of do circles around their tongue with my tongue. So like I'm not in their mouth at all. We're totally just in mine. And I've been told like it feels fantastic. So, Ooh, so that's one of my favorites. Let that <laughs> talk for itself. I fucking love it. Yeah. <laughs> all the things to try. It's so fun to explore kissing and new like styles and new techniques. And I feel like again, that's something that's not talked about enough. Cause like you said in the beginning, it's so underrated and people don't practice and don't give it that much attention but i love kissing so much it's so much fun we should be focusing on it we're talking (laughs) about yeah i think what we're talking about how underrated kissing is something we should mention is that kissing is not just an initiation so like kissing throughout intimate time is so important and it's hot and you can do a lot of really fun stuff if you're open to bringing kissing back into stuff like during actual sex like take a minute to like just start making out again like Mm -hmm. to to start kissing on your partner um like i think some of the hottest stuff is like if like say we're doing doggy and like he like kind of puts his arm around like my neck and like turns my head and starts kissing me while we're having sex super hot it's super important i think some people just get so lost in the sauce of like we're doing it Mm -hmm. like we're in it like this feels good on me i know that feels good for them but like also still kiss me it's hot mm-hmm. like I, yeah. I, you could still make out with me like it, it's still a great addition to any part of intimate time so putting it in between like if you're switching a position stop and do like a couple quick kisses hard kisses mm-hmm. neck kisses then go back to the new position mm-hmm. or like going in between like foreplay stuff so like if you just finished fingering go ahead and like kiss them kiss them while you're fingering like then move into you know oral and like after you're done performing oral make out some more like like the more you kiss during intimate time the better it is 100 percent, and i think that for me like when you kiss in the middle of doing all that stuff it like kind of brings it back like i don't know it's like, like a, a grounding yeah. and it's like oh i still i love you i'm I here i still see you <laughs> yeah yeah i want to turn you around but i also want to <laughs> yeah you know kiss you in the middle fuck of it all the shit out of you but yeah. i do want to give you a kiss <laughs> I do want to give you or like a sweet the kiss kiss at the end. That's my favorite, like the little forehead kiss after it's all said and done. Like, like, like I did a good you can job. Call me yeah. anything you want, pull my hair, slap me, but like by the end of it, like give me that kiss on the forehead. Yes. <laughs> it's just like I just want to be cuddled and like just a little, yes. little peck. Oh my gosh, I love it. That's so funny. Yeah. Well, we have reached the time in our episode where we like to do homework for honeys. Where we talk about one actionable step that we can all take to start incorporating everything that we talked about today. So, Cody, would you do the honor of giving all of us some kissing homework? Yeah, I think that if you're a newbie to kissing, so you haven't had your first kiss yet, or you really need practice, start practicing that hand technique we talked about today. So just taking your hand, making a fist, and try doing it. Maybe you do it in the shower for like, two or three practice seconds, like that's it. You don't even have to spend hours doing it, but just take some time throughout the week to be mindful to try to practice getting better at kissing. Love it. Yeah, don't do it where like your hand is now wrinkly because it's been (laughs) hours, but I love, yeah, definitely need to practice. We all need to practice and just get used to 
practicing things that we're just not confident in. Like, whatever, fuck it. Like, you're, that's the reason that your video went viral. It's because people want to know how to practice on their own and not feel ashamed of it. So yeah, I love that. No homework. pressure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So get so your bed post or your don't hand. Be weird. <laughs> <laughs> don't make it weird. <laughs> love it. So where can our listeners continue to connect with you? Yeah, so I have my own podcast. It's called mm-hmm. Boy Talk. So B O I T A L K. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. My TikTok and Instagram are O H H K O D Y. And you can find me on all those social medias. I'm always answering DMs on Instagram. I'm always answering comments on my TikToks. So if you have any questions, you want more advice, you want to see my videos, you want to see my tips on kissing and actually get some visuals with this, with this episode we just did, you can definitely come check out my TikTok. There's a bunch of kissing tips. They're all easily labeled. You can just Mm -hmm. scroll through my page and find the ones that are all about kissing. So perfect. And those will all be linked in the show notes. Love it. Thank Thank you you so much. So much. This was so much fun. (laughs) Thank you all. Do it. It's going to change my volume when they hear it. Oh. Yeah. Got it. They will have gotten it. So. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. (laughs) What are you doing? Oh, my God. She's a DJ, boys. (laughs) Oh, I like the sparkle. And we're up. (laughs) Thank you, Cody, so much for being on the podcast today. It was so much fun getting to talk to you. And thank you um, to our listeners for tuning in through everything. (laughs) Thank you so much. I will do your wedding if you want. I'll DJ your wedding. I did. (laughs) DJ Cows. So when we first started talking about the podcast, when we first started posting pictures of our equipment, a lot of people thought that we were becoming DJs. Um, So upsetting. Which um, we're not. We know some really amazing people. Some of our guests are actually DJs, Mm -hmm. which is amazing. We just don't have the personalities I would never for it. Have the competence <laughs> to be a DJ, I, I, and I just wanted that to be clear to everyone yes. who was inquiring. Absolutely, you needed it to be very clear. But I had a friend reach out, or actually, my fiance's best friend. So the be- who's going to be the best man in our wedding, and uh-huh. he's also getting married. Um, not at our wedding, but <laughs> <laughs> he asked me if I was becoming a DJ and I said, yes, I would love to do your wedding. And he was trying to be super, super oh nice. And he's God. like, we actually have this other band, but I'm sure they won't want to play the whole time. Oh. So I would love for you to do a set. And then I had to say, I'm so sorry. And I love you very dearly, but I am no DJ. So I am not a DJ yet, yeah. but I mean, you just heard my set. So if I mean, you're interested, hit me up. So things have changed. Anyway, uh, if you have a few minutes, head over to Apple Podcasts, rate, review, and subscribe to Honey Do Me Podcast. It helps us a whole, whole bunch. buttload. A whole buttload bunches. Bunches of buttloads. And on that note, we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.